Chad Smith. Mike. Mike. There's no screaming baby. Good evening. It's my pleasure to address you on the State of the Nation, June of 2010. Let's begin, as we have often, by remembering our Cherokee friends and family who have passed on this month. We have several people to hold in remembrance tonight. Clyde Enlow, the father of Todd Enlow. Jimmy Kidd, the father of Tim Kidd. Lindsay Carpenter, W.W. W. Hastings employee and daughter of Tammy Hall. Are there the others that the council would like to recognize at this time? Yes, sir. Sharon Cochran, when Oaks, Oklahoma. If there's no others, please bow with me for a moment of silence. But uh, we'd like uh, the family of Wilma Mankiller to come forward to make a presentation. Madam Speaker, uh, members of the Tribal Council, uh, Chief Smith and Deputy Chief Grayson, as you know, uh, our family was here last month uh, to honor Dr. Grimm, uh, who helped take care of Mom. Um, and tonight, we would like to honor someone who's even more special to us, uh, and that is Leandra Mike, uh, who was actually Mom's hospice nurse. And for those of you who have been through this process know that the hospice nurse is not only the person who takes care of your loved one, but they're also sort of a mediator between, you know, the good times, the bad times, the high emotions, the low emotions, and all of that. And I don't think that we would have survived um, as a family without Leander Mike uh, helping us through this during the process when it happened, and then after the process. So uh, Charlie, Felicia, and I are here to give a very special public tribute and honor to Leandra Mike, who is a hospice nurse for Cherokee Nation. And again, I want to reiterate that um, oftentimes these are the people who are in the background that are making all of us look good um, as a tribe and as Cherokee Nation. And Leandra is one of the... Um, probably one of the most special people uh, to the three of us. So anyway, we want to ask Leandra to come down so we can honor her. And again, for those of you who knew Mom knows that uh, she was a collector of watches and um, had many, many watches. And so what we'd like to present to Leandra is one of Mom's most favorite watches. Pink was Mom's favorite color. Uh, and so we would like to, for Leandra to accept this gift as a token of our appreciation for everything that you've done for us. No. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Leandra, your mom. you want to introduce your mom? By the way, they're from Mays County. <laughs> I just want to say it was a privilege.
It was a privilege and I loved doing it. And she got all the wishes that she wanted, the way that she wanted. And these people have taken me in and I feel part of the family. My mother, Sandra Bendabout, my stepdad, Sam Bendabout, and my daughter, Lene Mike. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. month in appreciation of our Cherokee veterans we are honoring brothers Walter and Thurman Thomas and Thurman's daughter Renee Thomas Thurman cannot be here tonight and his brother will accept for him Walter and Thurman were children of Thurman and Lily Thomas they were two of 15 children they grew up in Winona Oklahoma Walt Thomas graduated high school in 1965 in the midst of the Vietnam War and at a time when the country had initiated the draft. Walter volunteered with the Army. He served two years active service and four years in the reserves. Walter was trained at Fort Polk, Louisiana in February of 1967 and received orders for Vietnam six months later. He served as a rifleman in the 196th Light Infantry Brigade received the Army Commendation Medal for Valor just two months after being in Vietnam. Another two months later, he received the Purple Heart and earned the Combat Infantry Badge. After his honorable, dis after his honorable discharge in 1973, he went to work for the Cosby Group, McKinnon's Division in Tulsa, and worked there for 37 years until his retirement. Walter currently lives in Sand Springs with his wife, Becky. And if what we'll do is we'll ask all of you to come up as a family, if you will. Next, we'd like to honor Thurman Thomas. Walter will accept on behalf of Thurman's behalf. Thurman Thomas graduated from Seneca Indian School before attending Sequoia. In 1971, he volunteered for the U.S. Army and went to the basic training in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and then went on to Fort Sill in Oklahoma. Thurman was sent to... Germany in 1971 where he served for two years with the 2nd Battalion 5th Field Artillery Regiment. He was honorably discharged in 1973. Today he works as a pipeline inspector and lives in Wyoming. Tonight we also honor Thurman's daughter Renee Thomas. She was born in 1973 in Tulsa and she graduated from Manford High School. <laughs> A few years after high school, Renee decided to join the Army. She attended basic training at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and technical school at Aberdeen Proving Grounds in Maryland. She left active duty in 1999 and joined the Oklahoma National Guard. She is currently employed as a civil service technician for the Guard and is a warrant officer. She will, she will be a chief warrant officer this, too this fall. Renee has been deployed four times during her 13-year career. She voluntarily deployed with the 45th Infantry Brigade in 2011. In 2011, they will go to Afghanistan. Previously, she was deployed in Iraq, where she served as company sergeant, supply sergeant, and a platoon sergeant. She was also a victim unit victim advocate and trained 800 soldiers on sexual assault awareness. Renee has earned 18 declarations, citations, and awards. Among them are the Iraq Campaign Medal, the Global War on Terrorism Medal, the Armed Service Medal, the Commendation and Achievement Medals, and Meritorious Service Medals. If you all would come forward and let us recognize you.
uh, a great honor to be here tonight uh, to uh, be a part of this uh, great Cherokee nation, to be Cherokee. And it's a great honor for me to uh, be able to uh, see my niece here serving actively in the military. And uh, I know it's an honor for her also. And my brother Thurman, uh, he couldn't be here. Uh, he's in Wyoming at this time, and, and he would like to be here. And, and we have lots of friends uh, in and around the uh, Tahoe area, and uh, and it's a great honor to be here. And thank you very much. I just want to say thank you. Um, this is a great honor. It's an honor to be Native American um, in today's world. Um, when I go to Afghanistan, I would like to take the Cherokee flag and fly it for you and hang it out by the women um, from Iraq, which I was prepared on that deployment, uh, and then send it back to you all to keep and post it to Thank you. Thank you. Joe Grayson would like to share a, a great moment that uh, we had the honor last week. I had the great honor of going to the reunion of the USS Enterprise, one of the most decorated carriers in World War II. And they gave us a part of the flight deck of the USS Enterprise. And if you could smell this, it smells like machine oil. So it's probably the way the ship smelled back in those days too. I never got to serve on a ship. I could always run further than I could swim. <laughs> but we thanked them. It was an honor to be there with them. And every one of them was around 80 years old. But uh, they had a very good time and I really enjoyed talking to them. Also, Memorial Day weekend, the Cherokee Nation and CNB had the opportunity to help sponsor it at the Hard Rock facility, the Folds of Honor Gala, and it was a nonprofit that raised money for a scholarship for those who were wounded or lost, the families of those who were wounded or lost their lives in the Mideast. I'm always proud to share with you our Cherokee Nation staff's accomplishments. accomplishments. It's even nicer to share when others recognize their accomplishments, too. Several employees received awards recently, including uh, Diane Kelly, who I believe is here, and Daryl Lake in our Career Services Group, who were honored by the American Indian Chamber of Commerce in Oklahoma for their volunteerism and support. Uh, and this is a plaque that we got. Is Diane here? Okay. Let's recognize Diane and her group. Give them a round of applause. Veronica Hicks uh, of our Commerce Department was named Minority Business Advocate of the Year by the U.S. Department of Commerce. Katina Duggar of uh, Cherokee Elder Care was named the Outstanding Outreach Individual by the Oklahoma Task Force on Minority Aging. And Cherokee Nation Industries was also recognized by Lockheed Martin as an outstanding small business provider. Uh, in legislative issues, as the council knows, while our federal funding seems relatively stable, our general fund income can fluctuate positively and negatively with the economy. That's why I respectfully ask the council to reconsider parts of the budget modification before tonight. The Cherokee Nation has a contingency reserve of just $2.2 million, even though our annual budget is more than $600 million. To put it in simpler terms, in terms that I can certainly understand, it's like having a rating day fund of 30 cents, of 30 cents for every $100 we have to spend. That's one-third of 1%. To put that in perspective, the state of Oklahoma's rainy day fund is 7% of its annual budget, and that certainly isn't quite enough when time, bad times came. 
So we just have a tiny amount of money in reserve in case an ice storm hits, a tornado blows through, a flood occurs, a health outbreak cripples our hospital or gaming facilities, tribal offices, a financial institution falters, or we have some other unforeseen crisis. The reserve we have now won't make one payroll. It is important to note that this is the only contingency reserve that the Cherokee Nation has. All of our other reserves are already committed. Keep in mind, the Cherokee Nation has already had to make some general fund budget cuts this fiscal year. In fact, in these chambers just two months ago, we close, cut close to $8 million, and this next budget will be even more severe. We've been very fortunate to have been very conservative in this last decade, so we have not had to lay anybody off and keep our services maintained or increasing. It is the sound management as well as our fiduciary duty to our Cherokee Nation and our people that res requires that we maintain this very small reserve fund. This is why I believe the Council should reconsider taking money for a contingency reserve in this, contingent, this current budget modification. In committee, the Council voted to take near a quarter of our reserve and use it for a summer youth program, employment program. We have a program for low-income youth, and it is funded and actually expanded with the ARA funds for those that were income eligible. But what's proposed tonight is to take $500,000 from our contingency reserve and fund a youth program for those who are over income from the federal guidelines. Now, several years ago, I proposed using tribal funds for an over-income program because the lessons of summer employment promote self-help and self-reliant attributes necessary for success, and I certainly support the program. But the issue is not the worthiness of the program. It is that we do not have the funding for it this year without violating fundamental principles of sound management or consider laying off staff or cutting programs where adults depend upon the Cherokee Nation to support their families. While the overall program is a good idea, it just doesn't constitute an emergency. And I would encourage the Council to defer of tapping this contingency reserve. The second item on the budget mod tonight is an increase to the Tribal's Council budget for travel expenses in the amount of $70,000. Since many of our general fund budgets have already taken cuts, including my budget, I do not approve of our tribal council making an exception for itself and adding money for travel. Each branch of government must live within its means and budgeted amounts. From a cursory review of the budget analysis, it appears that the council as a whole will be under budget for this fiscal year. The council wants to spend additional money on travel this year I believe it could find room in its existing budget to do so. Encourage the council not to uh, uh, amend the budget to increase travel expenses. Also on tonight's agenda is of a provision to bring some clarification as to how numbers are determined in the uh, function of apportioning seats for an election and actually how you attribute citizen population to a district. So it's a critical piece of information that would aid not only our election commission, but our council in its, their statutory and constitutional duties. My only uh, question is that currently pending before the court is a case that addresses those issues precisely. And the judge, this hearing was conducted this last Friday uh, the judge is committed to making a ruling by this Friday. The parties have till tomorrow to submit findings of fact and conclusions of law, which indicates that the court will be timely on its order. And so I'm saying all that to say this. I would encourage the council to defer this measure or to table it and get the guidance of the court, and it may become a moot issue based upon the court's ruling. But that's subject to the wisdom of the court. Uh, the wisdom of the council. In closing uh, comments, I had the great opportunity to, uh, for uh, the Oklahoma Federation of Indian Women to confirm what uh, I and many of us already knew, is that my wife, Bobby Gale, the First Lady, was awarded as their Woman of the Year uh, this last month 
for her contribution to preserving and teaching our Cherokee language. I also had an opportunity. Were you going to clap? I think that's worthy of a clap. And the men on the council would understand that we're all the same fraternity. We were the ones who married up in life. Also had the great opportunity, was an uh, unforeseen one, that I was inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. And it wasn't because I was a great wrestler that they had a category for public officials who believe in the attributes of wrestling. I wrestled in high school and when you're in college. The great thing about wrestling, once you take the step on the mat, there's nobody in the world to blame other than yourself. It takes uh, determination, stamina, strategy, and persistence. But you, you wrestle to win and you wrestle to contribute to points to your uh, team. And for me, it was a very great honor. Just as a reminder, we will, with our uh, Cherokee Challenge for Fitness, we have another event this weekend in Muskogee on Saturday. We will be running and walking another 5K near the USS Batfish. And the challenge has been laid before the council and our employees and our staff to get involved in the Cherokee Challenge, become more fit, and set the example. In closing, our Remember the Removal bike riders have now made it halfway back to Tahlequah. They're in Kentucky right now. I met with them last week when they were in Tennessee. And we visited some historic places that were important to the Trail of Tears. And there's a great story right there in Nashville where we met at Mount Olivet Cemetery. The only senator, the only one of Congress to protest the Curtis Act, the Allotment Act, was Senator Bate from Tennessee. And he stood there on the Senate floor and told the Senate that the Curtis Act was in violation of all the treaties made with the Cherokees, and the Congress well knew it, but they proceeded anyhow. So this council passed uh, over a decade ago to put flowers on the graves of those non-Indians who have been great patriots of the Cherokee Nation, Angie DeBeau, uh, Butler, Worcester, uh, Joneses, uh, and of... Uh, Senator Bate. So we had the opportunity to tell his story with the bicycle riders and plant, put graves on his, uh, his uh, put flowers on his grave there. We anticipate the bike riders will be back on Wednesday, June 23rd, and we hope you will enjoy, join us in welcoming them, them back. Thank you very much, Speaker. If I can add to your <laughs> length of time, uh, I'd like for George Roach to come, for, to come forward and introduce the Career Services Youth uh, Program. <coughs> Evening, George. Thank you very much. Uh, tonight I'd like to uh, <clears throat> announce our 2010 Youth Leadership Intern students. Uh, we're under the Career Service Summer Youth Program. And at this time I'd like for interns please stand up and in introduce your name, where you're from. Go ahead. I'm Keely Blackwood from Westville, Oklahoma. And I'm 19 years old and I'm currently a pre-med student at Clark State College. Hello, my name is Christy Ketcher. I am from Stilla, Oklahoma. I am 18. I'm currently attending Southwestern Christian University and my major is Human Services. I'm Rachel Clayton. I'm from Tahlequah. I'm 18 and I will be attending Northeastern State University in the fall to be a music education major. My name is Nikki Tisworth. I'm 18. I'm, gonna, I'm from Tahlequah. I'm going to go to NSU to be in the NSU. I'm Ainsley Dry. I'm from Tahlequah. I'm 18. I'm going to go to NSU to be a special education teacher. I'm Ethan Green. I graduated from Keys, and I'm going to major in agriculture education. Thank you. Thank you. I like to say that um, our interns, there's there's a criteria they have to meet. First of all, you have to be a tribal member. Uh, you must have a 3.0 grade point average, uh, have a good letter of reference, and go into some type of a field that we would like to promote so they can come back and work for us so so they become, become leaders. And it is a competitive program where we had probably about, oh, I'm guessing 20 applicants who applied for it. And they each been 
interviewed and been selected. So it's an honor to be an intern with the, within the Career Service Department. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, George. Um, Mr. Schenhoff. Uh, Chief Smith? Chief Smith? Yes. Uh, do you owe me on a bet that we made out in California? Yes. <laughs> Are you going to deliver tonight? Huh? Are you going to deliver for me winning that bet? <laughs> win that bet? Oh, yes, ma'am. The bet was that uh, Diane Watson would not win her election. And she did, in fact, did not run again. And you bet that <laughs> Philip Newell would, and he got 6%. No, I didn't. Our bet. <laughs> weren't, you, weren't you holding the purse? I bet you we could beat Diane Watson. And she, is no, she will no longer be in the House of Representatives. I don't think that is. Whoever won the bet, I'd certainly be glad to share the bet with you at some appropriate time and place. Thank you. I'm sorry, Jordan. Let this be a lesson to you to get those bets in writing. <laughs> Get your own lawyer. <laughs> like a wise attorney. <laughs> Back to the order of business. There being no unfinished business, we'll move on to committee reports. The first report is uh, Mr. Sutherland, Housing Authority. Good evening. Good evening. Good to be here. Have a brief report. The uh, Housing Authority's uh, next board meeting for uh, June is tomorrow at noon, uh, the 15th. Uh, it's at the Eileen Hogner Conference Room, and it begins at noon. Uh, I spent... I'll have to pull my glasses off. I can't read anymore with them. Uh, I spent all the last week in Seattle at the Nahasda Negotiated Rulemaking Meeting. Uh, progress is being made uh, on the initiatives that we have, and we continue to uh, monitor the issues that come up during the meeting. Uh, Marvin Jones is on the committee representing the nation. Uh, he's doing a good job on our behalf. Uh, I usually give Marvin a hard time, but I'm going to give him a thumbs up tonight. He's doing a good job for us. Uh, and I know he's watching. He's watching this right here tonight. So. Uh, uh, there are three or four meetings to go, so we still got work left to do. Uh, on a uh, staff note, we've been monitoring our contracts that we've got uh, going on uh, uh, with the stimulus funding, got a lot of work going on right now. Uh, I've been getting messages of how appreciative some of our tenants are about receiving uh, some items in their apartments, such as uh, new storm windows, new storm doors. Uh, one lady commented on how our uh, electric bill has already gone down. So one of our uh, goals in the whole uh, with the stimulus funding was to uh, uh, promote energy efficiency, and I think we've done that. We're real thankful that we got those dollars and we're able to help some folks. Uh, that's my report for the evening. If anyone has any questions, I'll sure try to answer. Any questions or comments for Mr. Sutherland? Thank you, David. Thank you. Next two reports are Cherokee Nation Entertainment and Cherokee Nation Business. And uh, reporting for Mr. Sturt tonight is Don LaBasse. Mr. Sturt is recovering from surgery, so Mr. LaBasse, you're a good second, or good backup. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, from a, I'll start with CNB. From a from a CNB perspective, uh, just to pro provide an update on the uh, board reorganization, we had our second board meeting this weekend on a Saturday, which everybody was pleased with. Uh, so the the reorg's going well. Um, from an employment perspective at CNB, we have. Uh, all the companies combined, uh, just a little under 4,400 employees, of which uh, approximately 2,500 are CDIB Cherokees. We still don't have the uh, citizenship data for some of the entities uh, as of yet. So, And then from a uh, credit facility perspective, um, CNB still has 64% of the credit facility unused and available. So uh, from a CNE perspective, April, we're talking about April results, April was up approximately approximately 5.2% on revenue from the prior year, uh, but we're still below budget, about 8% uh, relative to what we had planned. Uh, net income for April is um, slightly lower than the prior year due to higher operating expenses. Um, from a contribution to the nation perspective, in, in addition to the dividend, CNE con contributed approximately 200000 in sales taxes to the nation. Um, 
from an expansion perspective, we opened the hotel in Siloam Springs over Memorial Day weekend. Um, we have opened two coffee shops that are serving Starbucks, and that's one in West Siloam Springs and one at the Hard Rock facility. Um, we also opened Ramona over Memorial Day weekend. They had about 90% capacity during that Memorial Day weekend, so it was a very successful opening. So we, we hope to see good things out of Ramona. Um, cultural tourism, one, one item of note, they received two citations of merit from the Oklahoma State Historic Preservation Office for the Ross Cemetery and Supreme Court Building Restoration Projects. So, any questions for CNB or CNE? Um, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Bass on being named Chief Financial Officer to CNE because he is a Cherokee citizen that moved up through the ranks to that position. Thank you. Actually, CNB as well. Good. Thank you. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Fishing Hawk. Yes, I was going to ask this to Stuart, but since you're here reporting, I need you to check out something, please. The last two weeks I've got several complaints, once again, from my Cherokees up at West Siloam stating that they have been told in front of other employees and dressed down that they would like to get rid of the Cherokees and hire some Mexicans. They're tired of them. And it's the same three people as names I'm hearing over and over and over in food and beverage. Okay. And after I hear it that many times, I do believe it's happening. And I would like something done about it. I can follow up on that and we'll see what we figure out. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Any other questions or comments from Mr. Labass? Thank you for being here this thank evening. You. The final report is Brian Collins, Cherokee Nation Industries. Good evening, Brian. Good evening. So you have a lady, a lady that there that looks very familiar. Yes. <laughs> I'll be talking about her in just a few moments. My report tonight's brief. Um, year to date for CNI, we are still tracking ahead of budget uh, with a $565,000 profit on a $53 million revenue base through March. Business segments continue to still have positive outlook through the balance of fiscal year 2010. CNI currently has 515 employees in the, uh, the local employment. Uh, total uh, Native American percentage is 82%. Uh, updates, or I say accomplishments, for the month of March, we had over $3 million of wire harnesses built and shipped. Uh, telecommunications is continuing to, to have uh, record sales, and they had a $3.3 million revenue uh, of shipments for telecommunications. I'd like to, to recognize an employee, a former employee now, a Cherokee citizen, a lifetime resident, Stillwell, America. My experience, this individual, every time I went out in the shop, and uh, and would tour the shop. This would be the person that typically I would see the first when I came down the ramp, and usually the last person I'd see coming back up the ramp. Uh, a great OU fan knows everything about OU sports. Uh, great attitude, great smile. So it's a it's a great person to have at the uh, beginning of the day and at the and at the end of your tour to keep everything in perspective. Mary White became an employee number 22 of Cherokee Nation Industries on August 4th, 1969. Mary, uh, she first worked in the old American Legion building where CNI started, working uh, on the Western Electric product line. Um, she had, had held many different positions in production, uh, testing cables, building cables, building harness boards, and also was a line supervisor. Uh, process checker, lead operator, on and on. She held probably many, many positions in production. For the last six years, Mary has been testing products. And, uh, and it's, it's sad, but I know it's, it's happy for her that uh, uh, she's at that point of retirement, at 40 years of service for Cherokee Nation Industries. She expresses her thanks. And, uh, and, is, and is very appreciative of the opportunity of the Cherokee Nation, having the opportunity to work for the Cherokee Nation, being a Cherokee Nation citizen. Uh, with that said, um, I would like, well, one more thing. She went five years of perfect attendance in our facility. 
And um, I asked her of all the years, what was the most, uh, the job that stuck in her mind, and that was the FMC, the Fighting Bradley, you know, helping build the, the harnesses for the tank. And uh, so with that said, I'd like to have Mary come down and give her a plaque, be recognized. Madam Speaker, that concludes my report. If there's any questions. Thank you for bringing Mary here this evening. Great. She runs a mean line over there. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Under uh, next order of business is old business. <clears throat> we have uh, an act relating to uh, access to Cherokee owned homes. Uh, last month, this legislation was vetoed. And the council sustained that veto as the principal chief offered an executive uh, order to effect a policy change to accomplish the objective of the legislation. And that policy change is included uh, before you tonight uh, for reporting purposes and informational purposes only. And uh, Mr. Hoskin, did you have a comment? Um, well, Madam Speaker, original legislation was vetoed came up with other legislation, got to full council. So I don't think we had voted to... I just want to be clear, this this legislation that's before us isn't before us on a veto override. It's, it's just been tabled. That's that's right. Okay. Um, I, I visited with Councilman Bill John Baker, and, and the administration has made a, an effort to meet some of the concerns that we had. I don't think it's as, quite as ambitious of a proposal that we had, but I think it is a step in the right direction. So, But I'd be inclined with Councilman Bill John Baker uh, concurrence is to withdraw this uh, item at this time. Okay, the item is withdrawn. Thank you, Mr. Hoskin. Under new business, uh, we have items that were approved in rules. We have a resolution confirming the nomination of Tanya Roselle uh, to the Cherokee Nation Education Corporation Board. And Ms. Gloria Jordan, would you like to present that? Yes, this is a resolution to confirm <coughs> Tanya Roselle as a board member of the Cherokee Nation Education Corporation. Um, under number one of the council's business, there's an extensive resume of Ms. Roselle's that indicates her years of educational experience. Uh, in addition, in committee, she uh, added an additional factor for the committee's consideration that she had failed to put on her resume that she is a Cherokee Nation member. And I would uh, move uh, by motion that this be that this lady, Tanya Roselle, be confirmed. She's also a good church member, goes to church with me. Second. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item two is a resolution honoring a young Eagle Scout from Texas, Ms. Cal Watts. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to make a motion to approve for Derek Ryan Prather for receiving the level of Eagle Scout from Boy Scout. Second the motion. And second, any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> Item three is um, a resolution supporting the prospective nomination of Chief <laughs> Harper to the U.S. Tenth Circuit. Uh, he would be replacing Chief Judge Robert Henry, who has resigned. <clears throat> this appointment is significant because Mr. Harper is a Cherokee citizen and he would be the first Native American to serve on an appellate court in the federal ju justice system. Um, my research uh, has shown that Mr. Harper has a vast amount of experience advocating for Native American rights. 
I also found it interesting that his great-great-grandfather was assistant principal chief of the Cherokee Nation in 1876. Um, I believe Mr. Harper is a stellar candidate for the Tenth Circuit. His credentials and character are outstanding, and if Mr. Harper is installed as the first Native American to serve on a U.S. appellate court, it would be a major accomplishment by a Cherokee citizen. And uh, Mr. Baker, would you yes, do the honor? I certainly will. I agree with all that Speaker Fraley has said about Keith Harper and is one of the at-large constituents. It's my pleasure to make a motion to adopt this resolution. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Yes, Ms. Gloria Jordan. I, I do have a comment. I was concerned during the <coughs> committee meeting about uh, deviating from an Oklahoma candidate. So I did some background work on Mr. Harper and learned that he, in fact, his family is from Oklahoma. That some of the reason why he was not in Oklahoma a good part of his childhood was because his uh, uh, father was in the military service, causing them to move to different locations around, around the world. I also uh, have an understanding that he is married to a Muscogee girl. And so my reservations, uh, I think if all of this had been explained to us on the committee level, it certainly would have went further on, on uh, how some of us voted. And so tonight I feel very comfortable in supporting this individual. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Aye. Acclamation. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 4 uh, is an amendment to the uh, Cherokee Nation General Corporation Act. Mr. Dr. Cobb. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As uh, most of us are aware, um, and we heard in, in report a, minute, a few minutes ago, uh, the boards of CNB, CNI, and CNE and I are uh, coming together as one board, and we are uh, doing the same as uh, our advisory uh, council members to those boards. This is an act amending Legislative Act 1510 of the Cherokee Nation General Corporation Act, creating, creating an advisory board of directors, setting term limits on the directors on the corporations in which the Cherokee Nation is a majority shareholder. And uh, I would move for its approval. Second. Moved in second. Discussion? Um, is this by, would you like to acclamation, by, by acclamation? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, item five is the resolution appointing um, uh, Tribal Council Advisory Board members to the Cherokee Nation Business Board. Dr. Cobb. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This resolution is the companion to the act we just passed, basically naming those board, those uh, council uh, members to the Cherokee Nation Business Board of Directors. Those counselors so named and have agreed to uh, become advisory council members are Counselor Bill John Baker, Madam Speaker Meredith Fraley, Counselor Karen Cowan Watts, Counselor Chris Soap, Counselor Jack D. Baker, and Counselor Harley Buzzard. I'd move for approval of this resolution. Second. Good second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Two carries. Item six uh, is an amendment to the election law um, providing for apportionment. Uh, Mr. Jack D. Baker. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. In the past, the uh, numbers for determining the number of Cherokee citizens within the Cherokee Nation, people have, we have used uh, entire zip codes that border the nation, and we've used the entire population as being within the Cherokee Nation, with the exception of Washington County, <coughs> where we found most of the citizens, Cherokee citizens were in Barbs. Well, actually, we use it there also because all the citizens were counted within. Well, now we have better data available with uh, geodata that we can actually go through most of these zip codes that have the ones that have geodata and determine exactly where they live and whether they live within the nation or not. So this act provides that we use those numbers 
to split those zip codes, and there are five zip codes that currently do not have geodata available, and their total number of Cherokee citizens add up to approximately 5,900. So in those cases, it provides for other means of trying to determine whether they live within the nation or outside the nation. So <coughs> this act is just to determine the correct number of people within the nation, and then that would be divided by 15 to determine the optimum number of uh, citizens represented by each count, each of the 15 council members within the nation. So I make a motion that we approve it. Second. Move and second. Discussion? <coughs> yes, Mr. Barber. Madam Chair, uh, <coughs> this is too little, too late. It looks like about a two-year project and the election's coming up pretty soon, so... Uh, and the court's going to give us some directions next week, so I'll make a motion we table this. Second. Motion to table and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. aye. Roll call, yes, it's to table. Yes. Bradley Cobb? No. Joe Crittenden? No. Jody Fishinghoff? No. Meredith Fraley? Yes. Janelle <coughs> Fulbright? Yes. Don Garvin? Yes. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? No. Tana Gloria Jordan? No. Chris Soap? Yes. Curtis Snell? No. David Thornton? No. Kara Callan Watts? Yes. Bill Anglin? No. Bill John Baker? No. Jack Baker? No. Harley Buzzard? No. We have six yes and eleven no. Six yes and eleven no. Motion to table fails, so we'll take the act up for <clears throat> um, approval. Madam Speaker. Yes. Just a because I had voted differently in committee, thinking we were moving towards some kind of consensus finally after five years of work. Um, and then I started thinking about logistically being able to execute it. And I think that's what Councilman Garvin alluded to uh, in a timely fashion for the election. And I still find inherent problems with just this piece of legislation that it treats all tribal citizens, all zip codes, and all areas, including internal borders, consistently. So I don't find that... I wish I could support something. I wish we could come together on this issue, but I think it's going to have to be refereed by the courts, and I'll be changing my mind this evening. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes, Mr. Hoskin. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. I think we, uh, as an institution, don't need to wait for the court to act. Certainly, if the court issues a ruling that uh, were to call this into question, at least in their eyes, there's certainly a, a appellate routes from that court decision. Uh, there's a severability clause in this legislation if some court were to strike down a portion of it. Uh, so I'm not concerned that uh, we need to let the court's uh, potential action cause this body to slow down on a matter that really needs to, time is of the essence, we really do need to act. And it, to the extent that some claim that this is too little too late and we don't have enough time, I just disagree. I think the the what the administration has to do to execute this legislation is very doable. I mean, as Councilman Jack Becker pointed out, we're talking about a very, very isolated number of Cherokee citizens where we just lack the precise data to be able to tell if they're inside the Cherokee Nation or not. And so with respect to those very isolated, discrete areas, uh, this just gives the uh, administration the tools that they need to identify where those folks live. And if we do that, I think we'll have as fine a count of citizens as we've ever had. So so I would encourage us to pass this. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Call for the question. Yes. Questions have been called. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. 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 Uh, roll call, please. Yes, as you approve this amendment. Chris Soap? No. Curtis Snell? Yes. David Thornton? Yes. Kara Callan Watts? No. Bill Anglin? Yes. Bill John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? Yes. Harley Buzzard? Yes. Julia Coates? No. Bradley Cobb? Yes. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Jody Fishinghawk? Yes. Meredith Fraley? No. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. 
Sean Garvin? No. <coughs> Chuck Hoskin Jr.? Yes. Hannah Gore Jordan? Yes. Of yes and five no. Of yes and five no. Motion carries. Okay, in the Executive and Finance Committee, we have item seven, a uh, resolution authorizing the sale of inherited property in <laughs> California. Um, Mr. Baker or Ms. Calmwatts? Mr. Baker? Yes, uh, this is a condominium in California that was uh, uh, left to the Cherokee Nation. It did have a mortgage on it uh, that they still expect some payments on and stuff, and this basically just gives uh, Cali the, uh, the legal right to make the payments until such time as this property sells, and uh, I put it in the form of a motion. Second. Second discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, item 8 is an amendment to approving Mod 8 of the 2010 Comprehensive Budget. Mr. Baker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This <coughs> budget mod provides for an increase of over $17 million to our budget. It includes mutual help and insurance recovery of $96,000. Department of Transportation Roads Program, an increase of three million over five hundred thousand. From self governments for health is basic capital improvements of over five and a half million. Health care bond payment of two point three million. Need a clinic construction of six million. An increase in the hospital funds of ninety two thousand. And as Chief Smith said earlier, it also moves five hundred and seventy five thousand from the contingency fund with 500000 being for the Summer Youth Fund and 75000 for the Tribal Council Travel. So this increases our budget to over $636 million. And I make a motion that we approve it. Second. Second. Discussion. Discussion. Yes, Mr. Baker. Uh, yes. Uh, I will speak to the $500,000 for uh, that the Chief mentioned in the State of the Nation for the uh, summer youth. Uh, the truth is 250000 of it is to fund the balance of the youth that are under income. Uh, hopefully we won't spend all of it, uh, but I do want to take care of each and every uh, <coughs> under income student that, that applied, that's qualified, and uh, it gives them the, the opportunity to, to fund all of those kids. Uh, now, any money that is not expended for those under income students will go back into the gen fund at the end of the physical year. So it really doesn't matter whether the, the additional is in this budget or in the contingency reserve. The other $250,000 uh, is for over income. But folks, let there be no mistake about over income. Over income students is if you're, if you're a child of a single mother who makes over $14,000 a year, you're over income. We're not talking about folks that are making $100,000 a year or $200,000. We're talking about a single mother that works at McDonald's and makes over $14,000 as a cashier a year, then her son or daughter is considered over income. Uh, times are tough. We know that. Uh, we want to be physically responsible, but if we don't take care of our youth, then what, what are we going to do? So I think it's a, an extremely good use of funds. It is coming out of the contingency reserve. Uh, the contingency uh, reserve is fully funded for the year, and we're, we're over halfway through the year. Uh, we looked at 15 other budgets that are, are extremely underutilized or have spent nothing, but rather than take it out of any place that could have possibly meant a job or possibly meant anything, we chose to take it out of this particular pot of money. But we've got literally hundreds of jobs that are that 
are in the budget that have not been filled for years. So it's not like we're down scraping the barrel at the bottom of the barrel. But we've got to take care of these kids. So I hope everybody votes for this. Thank you. Mr. Count Watts. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I think I heard a friendly amendment that I'm willing to accept that it excludes anybody over eighty thousand dollars a year in income. They can be above I income. Didn't, I didn't make the motion or second. They, but. they can. I did. And so did. Oh, you did. Yeah, and I seconded and. Are you making the friendly? Baker, well, I heard, so. I, I, I would gladly make the friendly amendment. That, that it, it, it would uh, exclude families that make 80000 or more a I, year. I think the original motion in committee was that they'd work from the bottom up, and uh, we'll probably never get to 80000 but that, that would be a fine amendment. Okay, I will accept that. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I wanted to ask Bill John a question on the <clears throat> under income, adding the $250,000. Does that bring the uh, under income from a uh, 20 hour week to 40 hour week? Um, we talked about it in committee, and you know, uh, if the dollars are there, and I mean, I'd have no problem with it. Uh, when I talked to staff, they said that uh, some of their sites wanted 40 hours, and some of them just absolutely did not. So I, I don't know how the logistics of that day, but uh, that'd make a good friendly for however you want to do it. Well, if it doesn't, I've got to be against it. Yeah, I think one of the things that uh, we've, we've uh, failed to mention is that uh, while this program uh, was administered, there were a lot of families that were turned away or, or they kind of went by the rules that were posted that said if you make over such and such income, uh, you're not going to be considered. And so that these uh, families that we're talking about, while they may be uh, in need and, and some we discussed, or I guess we didn't get to discuss that much because the, the question was called before we could agree upon any of these values as far as whether or not 8,000 was um, applicable to families in our areas or whether it might even be 45,000. Um, what we did was was we just said that we're going to cover those people that uh, you know didn't really um, pay attention to the rules that were posted and went ahead and submitted their application anyway. So that's one of the things that the problem that I have with the way that the council uh, implemented these uh, actions is that, that there wasn't a lot of consideration and, and, and the, the payments aren't going to be fair to those families that said, hey, I might have been eligible, maybe I'm a single mother that makes 35000 I've got a daughter that applied, but because I would have been over income, we didn't complete the application. But the people on this side that did, they're going to get funded. So that's the that's problem that I have with this uh, this budget model and some of the other things, so I'll be voting no tonight. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I have. Uh, <clears throat> I agree with Mr. Soap, and additionally, um, I just don't think it's good business to take $575,000 from a, what I call our savings account. Uh, we have... Uh, this 75000 that's added to Tribal Council budget will increase the Tribal Council travel budget to approximately $304,000. And I just don't believe that's good business to do that. So I'm going to, I'll be voting no also. Any other comments? Um, roll call. Harley Bezer? Uh, yes. Julian Coates? No. Bradley Cobb? No. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Jody Fishinghoff? Yes. Mary Fraley? No. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. Don Garvin? No. <coughs> Chuck Hoskin Jr.? Yes. Anna Glory Jordan? Yes. Chris Soap? No. Curtis Snell? Yes. David Thornton? No. Alan Long? No. Bill Anglin? Yes. Bill John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? Yes. <coughs> Ten yes and seven no. Ten yes, seven no. Motion carries. Okay, item nine, uh, coming out of committee today, out of the education committee, 
is uh, a resolution authorizing a grant application for a promised neighborhood grant. Ms. Coates? I'm going to defer to Councillor Crittenden uh, as a co-sponsor for this sort of Councillor Fishing Hawk since I think it will be in their district for the most part. Okay, um, and thank you, Ms. Coates, for that. Um, this grant application is to the Department of Education Office of Innovation and Improvements. It's, it's a proposal for planning funds that will build a complete continuum of academic health and social service programs to improve the educational and developmental outcomes of children in our most distressed communities. And as we discussed in committee, I am from one of those areas. <coughs> it's, uh, we it singled out a lot as, uh, as the distressed uh, area of the state. And uh, so I'm supporting this. It's for a $500,000 grant request. There is a cash match of 125000 And uh, with that, Madam Speaker, I would move for the approval. Second. Second. Second discussion. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Garvin. I was going to ask where this 125,000 was coming from. Uh, Miss Knight can probably answer that question. <coughs> Mr. Critton, is all right to defer to Miss Knight? Yes, and, and and in the committee meeting today. Uh, it, um, we didn't discuss that, I don't believe. Uh, so it's a good point to do it here. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We would propose that the cash match come from our cash match fund that we appropriate each year, typically. Uh, we plan to submit a budget for that in 2011. Um, on If the occasion arose that the council chose not to approve that budget, uh, we would, you know, at that point make a decision about whether to accept the grant. But at this point, we're planning on the cash match fund. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Garvin. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, um, Ms. Calmwatch, would you like to take 10, 11, and 12 in totos and say Pastor Nanisley in committee? Yes, I'd be. I think that would be great. So the Veterans or Veterans Center in Claremore with three computers and two printers donated from excess property. Sequoia High School's IDA fund for a $130,000 total grant with a $65,000 cash match, which $53,000 is left from another grant that's been pre-approved. And the other twelve comes from that cash match fund, which has already been approved by the SBA and is an existing budget. Then the Brownsfield grant for $190,000 to clean up Brownsfield sites within the tribe and no match required. I'd like to approve all three in toto. Second. That's a motion. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> yes, Ms. Laura Jordan. I do have an additional comment to make on the one dealing with the uh, uh, funding for secondary schools uh, for the Sequoia children. Uh, Paula was so kind to get answers to some concerns that we raised in committee and one of the concerns was if the children uh, had the money in their names, was it going to impact their ability to receive scholarships? And the answer is that the children participating in the program will save $1,000. This is from their freshman year to their senior year. And this will be the only amount that ever is put in the family's names. The cash match will be kept in a different account and paid directly to the school. And by doing it this way, we're ensuring that those children will not be prohibited from uh, participating in uh, an attempt to receive additional scholarships for their secondary schooling. And, and I think that is a great way to put that together. Any further discussion? Call for the question. Questions been called for approval of items 10, 11, and 12 in total. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, any announcements? Yes, Ms. Calmont. Tomorrow night at 6.30, the Will Rogers Memorial is hosting a public event or public showing in the National Park Service 23-minute Trail of Tears film. 
um, that can seat more than 200 people, and we would love to have anybody in the area. That's tomorrow night at 6:30, and you can PM, and you cannot purchase the film. You have to wait for a public showing or go to one of the trail sites. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes, Mr. Baker. The I know everybody sees him quite often and and all, but I think we should never fail to recognize a former council member. Uh, we have Jackie Bob Martin with us. <laughs> Jackie, Bob, I would ask you if you wanted to make a comment, but I know how long it takes, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other announcements? Over here. Oh, Dr. Cobb? I just wanted to mention uh, anybody that happened to watch game one of the OU Virginia baseball uh, series. Game three is going on right now. Um, they spent about an inning and a half talking about uh, the best baseball, the best name in college baseball, and it was Caleb Bushy had the shortstop for OU. And they kept talking about it. they wondered where that came from. So I thought that might be interesting to write him a little note and just say, hey, good job. So. Any other announcements or comments? Yes, Ms. Fulbright. Uh, Councilor Thornton and I are having our community meeting next Tuesday night at Blue Ribbon Downs, uh, west of Salisaw at uh, the Banquet Hall, formerly called the Clubhouse. It starts at 5.30 in the evening. We'd like to extend uh, invitation to all members of the council and the chief, deputy chief, and all department heads or anyone that can come. We're having Indian tacos. William Deerham Waters, our chief cook, so I'm sure it's going to be good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Aye.